Hi everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. And this is another episode of Cop or Not, where I discuss some of the RCs that have been announced for the year, and my consideration on whether I will or will not be wanting them. Now in case you're wondering, and you're not from my neck of the woods, the term cop means to catch or obtain, and that's where my title of Cop or Not comes from. There have been a lot of things that interest me from all brands, but let's be real, I can't buy all of them. These are just the things that interest me. So without further ado, let's get on with it. We are firstly taking a deep plunge into the big T. That's Tamiya with their highly anticipated yearly announcement of their new drip fed lineup of models both newly releasing or re-releasing. The first things we'll get into are the two CCO2s coming out. I'm starting here because well there's two of them and they're almost the same. The extremely cute little 2021 Ford Bronco two door sporting a 252mm wheelbase and the limited edition pre-painted light blue 1990 Land Rover Defender 90 with a shorter 242mm wheelbase. The Defender is not new, it was previously offered in clear form with the CCO1 kit. The CCO2 by now needs no introduction. It's a 4-link solid axle coil sprung trail truck, which is true to scale for the Defender, however the 2021 Bronco in real life is not a solid axle up front, so that may be of concern for true to scale hobbyists. For me, it's a tough call but I don't mind. Given the other option being a CC01, which is a great platform to work with, but just lacks the ground clearance in the real world. And I would intend on taking my little Bronco places a CC01 would probably have trouble going. And I also assume the majority of people purchasing this model would want some capabilities to tackle larger obstacles. To add to that, my thinking is that this model will bring a few completely new people to the RC world. If this happens, I'd rather these new RC friends get to experience the CC02 over the CC01 as a first trail truck. Now, big question, do I want either of them? Well, the pre-painted Defender offers the ease of a professionally painted body right from factory, saving me time and work during my build, and getting me playing sooner. It's also a limited edition. The Defender itself is a special truck, almost untouched from 1983 to 2016, and going for upwards of 100k Canadian for a real example, even an old one. It's pretty cool, but my tension is on the Bronco. I'm still deciding whether to sell my current G500 CCO2 and get the whole Bronco kit, or just patiently wait for the body set, as I don't mind not having the standard factory wheels. The 1976 Bronco was my favorite American truck, and their new 2021 almost looks no different. I absolutely love it. Next we track over to the new GF01 FT with their previously available Land Cruiser 40 body, which is Tamiya's second kit offering that comes with their new track set in the box. The first offering being the Land Freeder Quad Track TT02FT. The chassis is not new, it's known for its comical and fun characteristics. It's basically a four wheel drive gearbox with wheels attached to it, a motor hanging out the side, and a much needed wheelie bar on the rear. I really like this chassis. I don't own one as of now, but a four wheel version of the Wild Wheelie 2 or the Honda City Turbo is a definite win to me. They've used this chassis in many, many models, and it's a very popular one as I can see in Asia. I spend a lot of time watching Japanese guys turn these into comical trail trucks and running them. So now with the inclusion of a set of tracks, that makes this a very alluring kit. Not only do you get a fun, well-known proven chassis, but you also get a set of tracks that I would hope to assume you can also install on some of your other Tamiya vehicles. Tracks need no intro either. I have a lot of content with these tracks on my channel, working well in many conditions, snow, sand, mud, and grass. You also have the option of building two different styles of track to suit your needs. Will I be getting one? I don't think so. Only way I would want this is if I sold my Land Freeder quad track, because I feel I only need one set of Tamiya tracks to enjoy. See, Tamiya did not include the adapter pieces I need to install my track set on my CCO1 or my CCO2. So if they include adapter pieces in this kit, I would consider selling my quad track and funding this kit because I would also get the GF01 chassis that I would probably enjoy. Alright, we pick up the pace now and speed into a pair of aces. Two beautiful pieces of adrenaline pumping history. More golden re-releases for us. Chassis from many years ago, available again for us to bask in. The 1990 Mercedes-Benz C11 Le Mans car. 
five pure carbon fiber shells were entered into the Le Mans series, and it generated 5,879 pounds of downforce at 200 miles per hour. Introduced in 1979, raced in 1990. They qualified and took home a 1-2 finish for their first time out. They won all but one race that year due to engine failure. This car is a legend. But there is one very special factor that makes this one, the number one car, different from the other four cars. Car numbers two, three, four, and five finished the season. Car number one was a cheater car. It turns out the car Tamiya is re-releasing to us was disqualified in Mexico for wrongful allocation of fuel. That makes this livery extra special to me. Sitting on a 10th scale pan car chassis, proper direct drive rear pod, kingpin suspension for only the smoothest of surfaces. Very fitting at this time as I see a growth in popularity with one 10th scale pan cars, also known in the racing world as WGT. Even X-Ray has released a new 10th scale pan car chassis, which makes me perk up quite a bit. But back to this Tamiya. It's a new one to myself, something I had not paid attention to prior. Over the course of the last two years, I've been seeing many RMO1 chassis and Tamiya Group C chassis on the marketplace, but I had thought they were the same thing. Not knowing that the Group C chassis was a 1 tenth scale, I skipped over them. Sad, because I missed quite a few good gems. So I'm quite happy that they're re-releasing these, so I may be able to get a hold of the Mazda 787B one day. If I can get them all, I would, but my top choice will have to be to hold out for the Mazda for now. Hoping it comes. And if this thing drives anything like Tamiya's F1 chassis, it'll be a dream to wheel through a chicane. Now the other ace, the ace of hearts for me. The 1977 Tyrell P34 six-wheeler F1 car. Something I've always seen as a showpiece in only the highest-end hobby shops. It's one of those very vivid visual memories that I hold, very clear in my mind. Seeing this monstrosity of a Cosworth V8, wielding two additional wheels out front, banned after taking a 1-2 finish in the Swedish Grand Prix. It's the team predecessor of Braun GP, which is now championship winning car Mercedes. It's quite special to me. I've even got a 164 scale version next to my toothbrush. Now I've seen these models on Marketplace, but never pulled the trigger. And I'm happy I didn't because most of them, except for one, were the Lexan version. This one looks to be the hard body version, making it even more desirable. I've gone ahead and put this one on pre-order. It's going to look so good going around the local track. Staying in the high speed region, we zip on over to these two performance minded race engineered precision chassis. The M08R, limited edition of the standard rear wheel drive mini class M08, and the TRF 420X, a new variant of the TRF 420 four wheel drive touring car. The M08R is a very nice hopped up version of the M08, including carbon fiber and blue aluminum parts all over. I've already got an M08, otherwise I'd be all over this thing. If you have a look at the list of included options, you can see why this limited edition is something you'll want to order if you've been in the market for a rear-wheel drive mini chassis. Just keep in mind that it does not come with electronics or a body and tires. Also, they've now swapped the sealed gear differential from the M08 for a ball differential, which does make it more easily adjustable, but the verdict for me is split on that one. If you're a TRF collector or a mid-rear motor driver, then you'll be pleased to see the new 420 offers a spur gear moved in front of the motor, utilizing the belts from the TA08 Pro and moving the overall balance forward. The option of an aluminum chassis for high traction surfaces, as well as a carbon fiber chassis for lower traction surfaces is also included in the kit. Many people are disappointed that Tamiya has not come out with a new mid-motor design. I can't help but think it's because the Tamiya TA07 MSX variant was overlooked. It has options for three motor positions, mid-motor being one of them and includes both aluminum and carbon fiber chassis. Why don't we see more of the TA07 MSX? In 1996, the famous Black 7 cliff-sponsored four-wheel drive Opel Calibra won the ITC championship. Right then, 
der Meisterschaft zur Zeit. Und die sind direkte Kontrahenten natürlich, was die Meisterschaft betrifft. Und beim alten Fuchs Klaus Ludwig scheinen offensichtlich... The year before that, in 1995, we had a J.J. Leto driving this car with the number 20 on the side. Originally released in 1995 on a TA02 chassis, this re-release comes to us on the TT01E chassis, which needs no explanation. I thought that was interesting considering the yellow and white Opel that we just got re-released was on the TA02 chassis. It's not actually a problem, it's really good, because the last Opel Calibra was almost $100 Canadian dollars more on the TA02 chassis. So if you passed on the recent Calibra, now's another chance to get one for a little less money. We're also getting something that I don't think was actually gone. I saw it still up for sale up until about a year ago, but it's coming out as a limited edition this time, and that's the 2004 Subaru Impreza Rally that debuted in Mexico. This one sits on a TT01 E chassis as well. Next up is the sexiest of the three, the Renault Alpine 110 Berlinette. I absolutely love the lines on this vehicle, and the 2 plus 2 coupe styling adds sophistication, keeping it from being cute. Almost 20 years before all-wheel drive dominated the rally scene, this rear-engine rear-wheel drive featherweight boasting 130 horsepower took the Monte Carlo victory in 1971, leading Renault Alpine to winning their very first World Rally Championship in 1973. The model we are blessed with this time proudly blankets itself in a famous bright orange livery, a very gorgeous Jägermeister example. And I've put my pre-order in because it comes true to scale on a rear motor, rear wheel drive mini chassis that I don't have yet, the M06. I'm very excited to play with this one. And now we're on the last bit of the Tamiya stuff. A lot of people seem to be very happy the Avante Black Edition is back, and many not so much. I think, however, it's a great opportunity to own the chassis if you've wanted one, or to convert one into a standard version. The Thundershot is one of the more favored bodies to be found on this chassis and it comes pre-painted. It's essentially the same as my Thunder Dragon, so I won't be interested in this one, but if you're in the market for a Thundershot chassis, or a four-wheel drive buggy, then this might be one to get. Moving on to the last, but certainly not the least of the three buggies, we have the TD2 Super Astute, boasting a name many don't want to see on it. I do like the body a lot better than the TD4 that just came out. I originally had my pre-order in for this one, but decided to cancel it. Reason being is that the essential differences just aren't big enough for me to be interested. Kick up angle seems to be different, and shock mounting along with the battery position. That's about it. But if you didn't pick up a TD4, and you enjoy driving two-wheel drive buggies, I'd hope you pick one of these up and share your experiences with us. Until then, I'm busy playing with a wild one, holiday buggy, and a buggy champ as my two-wheel drive buggy vices. And now, the ace of spades. Well, to me anyways. The all-new rally-specific XV02 chassis. I've already made an in-depth initial thoughts video at the time of recording this, so I won't go into it too much. But Tamiya is releasing their second 100% rally-specific chassis. The first one was a front-motor belt-driven design, giving it a very distinct driving feel and handling characteristic, with the main weight hanging in front of the front axles. Now, with this new offering, they've gone shaft drive with a mid-motor layout, completely different from the first-generation XV01. It has plastic and Lexan dust guards and comes with long stroke suspension. Releasing only in pro form for its debut, you will have to provide your own body and electronics. With my love of rally, needlessly said, I've already ordered one. If you don't want to break the bank on this pro version, I'm sure we can assume that the standard version isn't far away. And that ends the Tamiya chapter. This video is already four pages long in Microsoft Word, and I've spent so much time on Tamiya, so I'm going to round off all the other brands altogether in a very quick list shout out. Let's go. Other vehicles I'm interested in include HPI Nitro WR8 with the 2003 Monte Carlo Subaru Rally body. This body was the last year of the Bug Eye generation in Rally, and it sits on an HPI Bullet chassis. The Bullet chassis is probably over 10 years old now, but it is quite sound. I just don't expect it to be jumping to the moon. 3 Racing FGX 2022 Formula 1 chassis. This is a more realistic take on an F1 car as opposed to the current rear pod style F1 cars. I own the older FGX F1 model, so I'm excited to see the differences other than the mid-motor mount. Rock Hobby is intriguing me with their extremely realistic scale working models, but I'm holding out for possible future models. Charisma released a Pajero with a 313mm wheelbase. I wouldn't mind getting that body and putting it onto my SCX10. 
I own all-wheel drive drift cars and a rear-biased counter-steer drift car. I've played with a rear-wheel drive drift car before, but I don't own one. Yokomo has announced the YD2ZX drift kit, and that's interesting. Or the latest MST RMX RRX 2.5 just announced, and that's also interesting. On top of that, A Plastics just showed off a Mazda FC body that I'd love to use. Team Associated is one of those companies from the golden era, through the platinum era, and is still around. But their offerings have dwindled down to almost only 20% of the products they used to offer. I'd like to help support them in making a comeback by picking up a couple of 1 10th Apex 2 Huna trucks for my kids. Kyosho has teased us with a gorgeous retro Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. I've never owned a phaser chassis and I have a feeling this might be the place to start. They are making waves with these amazing scale bodies. Kyosho is also bringing back the Optima Mid, which I have no good reason to want. I don't even know what it is. I've never seen one in real life, but so many people give it respect. So much so that I want to know what it's all about. I wouldn't mind getting one of those. Axial Racing's RR10 Bomber looks like something really fun to bomb off-road. And the driver figures sit up tall and they're quite visible. The Red Cat Monte Carlo is super appealing to me. That was part of a school project I helped my little brother on when we were kids. So that car has got good feels all over when I see them. HPI is still coming out with their Sport 3 chassis, now with the Audi e-tron body. I hope they can re-release some rally bodies on that chassis in the future. I'd like to support them some more. MST is releasing the Mitsubishi Delica. I hope to get just the body set shortly after. That way I can put it on my CCO too. And last mention goes to the out of stock Charisma Pagani Zonda. I would have loved to drive this thing around the track, but it's probably best that I don't have one. I'd end up smashing it into the barriers anyway. Well, that wraps up everything, and it's been a long time writing this, recording it, and editing it. If you could give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, that would really let me know that this was worth doing. Thank you again for joining me on my channel for another video. If I missed anything you think I should look at, tell me in the comments below. I'd also love to hear what your plans of purchase are this year. Tell me in the comments below. Bye for now. See you in the comments down below.